Hey, uh, good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? Cold. Oh, oh, all right. Oh, uh, you know what a fantastic day to be here in, in uh, Stuttgart, uh, home for for some of us, both past and present. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say uh, thank you for the gift of your time. Sorry, I, I got to take a quick. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I also I also remember that a long time ago too. Uh, so uh, yeah, no, thank you for the gift of your time, right? Uh, uh, for the opportunity to be be here. I know certainly for me, you know, it's a humongous honor. It's just a, an honor to be here, to be a part of your ceremony, to recognize you and your family for a, a, a huge milestone, right? The, the army defines a successful career for an officer is to, to get promoted to the rank of lieutenant from you. Uh, that is a, a successful career, and it certainly has been a successful career thus far, and will be. So uh, I won't take a lot of time because the, the focus today is obviously on, on Jonathan and his family. Uh, but you know, I just wanted to mention a few things. One, uh, you know, I was extremely fortunate to come into a brigade command that had some gaps in leadership and to have uh, the best brigade XO in the 1st Cavalry Division as in John Street. Um, the 1st Cavalry Division is not easy. It's the biggest division in the world, right? Biggest division by type of command. It's got 195 company battery troops across the division. Right? 195, uh, it's enough to, to take cities, right? And that's what armored strike divisions do. But to sustain that takes uh, a division sustainment brigade and it takes leadership, and, and Jonathan was just that leadership, uh, helped bring me on board. Uh, very quickly resonated with John, because like him, we both came into the Army in the late 1900s. Uh, at least that's what my 20-year-old daughter says. She says, oh, a century ago, late in the 1900s is when you came in. But, but Jonathan's actually got me beat by a couple years having come into the Air Force in 1996, so, so just by a couple years. Um, but it shows in his approach and the way he team builds, and the way he attacks everything. Um, so what I'd like to do is I, I would like to bring up uh, Laura, Zahara, and, uh, and Jeshua up here, because service is a matter of the heart, um, and it's a, it's a family unit that does it. And while I know Jonathan will have an opportunity to do this, uh, you know, we always talk about like what are the different kind of commands, and at the division level, a division commander will say, the difference in the division command is whether you have a band or not, right? Uh, that actually means something in the army uh, at that level. Uh, at the brigade level, uh, you got coins, right? You got a, kind of the different coins. And so for uh, Sahara, I want to give you two coins, right? Because this is so. This is a, a wagon master coin. It's got the crest, right? Of course. And this is the other one, which is a, a wagon. Right? Take a look at those two. And the reason why it's important is because you got brigade commanders that have coins. And then you got brigade commanders that have croc gibbets. So croc gibbets, oddly, are the things that soldiers want more than coins nowadays. It's just a little thing you put on your crocs. And this is a win with wagons. So it's got both the wagon and the crocs. And I wanted to, to have the family up here because that just end with, with something. So uh, anthropologist Margaret Mead uh, was asked uh, many years ago in a forum that she was speaking about what was the uh, evidence of the first civilization among, among mankind, right, among humans. <clears throat> and they expected her to say something like, when they uncovered a clay pot or an arrowhead or these things that showed uh, proof of like some sort of advanced tooling, uh, advanced capability of, of cooking and feeding together. But she actually said that the, the first evidence of a civilization was a skeleton that they found that had a broken femur that healed. She said the reason why that was the evidence of civilization because a long time ago, if you broke your femur, you were dead, right? You were food for wild animals. You couldn't get yourself to water. You couldn't defend yourself. You couldn't, couldn't forage. You couldn't do the things that people need you to do. But a broken femur that heals means somebody took care of you. Somebody gave up themselves for you, right? Giving up yourself for others is primarily you know, what we do in the service, in this calling, both for the family and for the soldier. Um, but to do that goes against just human nature, right? Because human nature is to just to be selfish, to preserve your own energy, to do things that are just for you. But to give up yourself 
to defend someone else, to, to protect them, to feed them, to get them there means you got to give more than. And something that, that certainly Jonathan and I talked about very early, uh, at least when I got to, to First Calvary Division where he had already been for, for over two years, was that uh, all it takes is everything you got. It's very simple, but it's super hard. It just takes everything you got. And I want to, for always giving everything you got. To every organization you've been in, to the people that have been there, to take the time to help someone, to not always fix, because that's tough, right? Because we primarily, I learned it from my wife many years ago when my daughters went, they brought a problem to her, and they just wanted to talk, and she stopped, she would stop them and say, hey, is this a fix it or a feel it? Like, this is my oldest when she was like 12. She said, you gotta tell me, if you just, if this is just a feel it, if you're just frustrated about something, you wanna get off your chest, you gotta let me know. Because I'm a mom, and my job is to fix. 99.9% of the times I'm fixing. So when you come to me and you just want to talk about something that bothers you, I'm going to try to problem solve. Right? Um, and that's also the job of leaders. Your job is to run toward the sound of gunfire and to fix uh, all the time. So it's very rare you get the opportunity to like feel. And so as a commander, you don't talk to really anybody about your feelings, right? You know, you don't you don't talk laterally, maybe with one of your battle buddy brigade commanders, but you're just in every direction. Um, you don't go up, you go down, go, don't go down. But every once in a while, you get a fantastic exo. And you can sit there in the office, uh, you can break out a glass of some stuff, talk through things that are happening, uh, you know, at 10 o'clock at night on a, on a Wednesday. Um, you don't often get that. So I want to thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart for you, for your leadership. Attention, Wait, hold on. Just real quick. I'm sorry. So, please react. Relax. I know it's not a move, uh, facing movement. Attention orders is just to stop what you're doing to pay attention to orders given. Uh, and then I think who else do you have helped? I just kind of listened to them. Attention in order. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and the ability of Major Jonathan A. Swartz. In view of these qualities and his demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, he is therefore promoted in the United States Army to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel, signed Christian E. Warmer, Secretary of the Army. saying the right oath, and is the person uh, reciting it uh, on the other end, reciting it verbatim, right? But the, the great thing about our oath as the uh, United States Army is, you know, we're a year and a month older than the very nation we defend, right? From June 14, 1775. And so the oath means something. The words in it mean something particularly about exemplary conduct and the office about, of, of which you are about to enter. The office, of course, isn't an office, it's not a rank. It's not even a position, it's the office in which an officer enters and what they're duly, you know, tasked with, right? And it starts with, with the oath in which we pledge to something other than, you know, England, right? So it means something, and I know you will talk about it with your, your turn because you're a great historian. <laughs> I, Jonathan Schwartz, 
Aye, Jonathan Swartz. Have been promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. Have been promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. In the Army of the United States. In the Army of the United States. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the defense. That I will support the defense. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Born in the United States. Born in the United States. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And lead us to the Senate. And lead us to the Senate. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservations. Without any mental reservations. That I will well, that I will well, and faithfully, and faithfully discharge the duties, discharge the duties of the office, of the office which I'm about to enter, of which I'm about to enter. So, well, so, so well. Well. Great. 
Sarn Bostic did it. If it's not, just blame Sarn Barry. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, without further ado, uh, the food is out. There is chicken and pork options, so please uh, enjoy it and uh, eat as much as you can. And uh, again, thank you very much. Ha, <laughs> ha, 